So just a brief talk on uh, coastal morphology and the fate of Cape Bowling Green, with many thanks to uh, my also Chris Hopper for his help. Uh, uh, the river catchment of the Bader King is huge, 130,000 square kilometer, of which of which a Bader King Falls catches 114,000. So most of it, as we heard, it, it has got a river discharge which varies from year to year and between the dry and wet season. In the wet season floods, we create a, a plume of Cape Bowling Green. And this, this is what it looks like. One view um, per hour over um, uh, um, 10 days for the 2007 flood of uh, 8,000 meter cube per second. So over 10 days. So it formed a plume to a large degree, it moved north. There's a little bit that also moved to the south at the Cape Upstart. And most of the of the very low salinity is in the bay itself. Uh, it also carries sediment from the catchment. Uh, for the part of the river flowing in the dam, the dam, as we uh, heard from Stephen Lewis, traps about 31% of the clay, 66% of the fine silt, and 92% of the sand. There is also more, uh, more uh, but the sediment, which is coming from the small river downstream of the dam. So let's start with the fate of the fine sediment, the mud. Uh, nearly all the fine sediment reaches the sea. About, and this, so, this is the fate of sediment. It comes in the plume, but of course it falls out, out of suspension. And about 67% of uh, defined sediment. So this is a plot of the uh, suspended sediment concentration, how much is in the plume of the mud. So 67% will actually settle in the uh, upstart bay and the rest will be um, uh, exported during floods and also cyclones. In the dry season, there is very little outflow from the river. The tidal current sp uh, splits um, uh, the bay, um, uh, Bonin Green Bay. This is a plot of the, um, uh, the tidal current in calm weather uh, once per hour. When at, uh, so, and uh, it splits the bay in two systems. One system which is muddy to the east, and the system which, uh, which is fairly clear water to the west. And the jet forms of Cape Bowling Green, which most likely is the reason which, uh, which uh, basically supports the bay fish aggregation which is found off Cape Bowling Green. Now, we talk about the mud, now we talk about the sand. The sand is the coarse particle. It is not carried in suspension, the water. It just hops on the bottom. Not all the sand which is carried by the river in flood reaches the sea. Uh, in the coastal plain, some sand is trapped in the Badakin River bed because the floods are smaller because of the dam. There's not much data. We have some data. We have some data um, uh, at the bridge in Lincoln, which suggests there the bed has come up about um, one meter. There's data at three more sections downstream from the bridge, and uh, it, shows, it shows the level of the bed in uh, 2009 and in, and in 2017. And in some cases, like it's plot in the middle, 
the bed has come up up to um, uh, um, uh, two to three meter. In other uh, other places, it's much less. In some places, it didn't change. But if you take an average of all the data, this is all the data that we have. It looks like about 10 years worth of supply of sand it does not reach the sea. It's trapped in the riverbed. And to a large degree, that's because of the dam. Then the remaining sand has to find its way uh, to the delta to reach the sea. There are four time series plot. They start in, in the year 1984. For the mass of the river, some of the sandbar, since the dam is built, seems to come back. Uh, for the creeks, for those two creeks, they don't receive so much flow. They, they don't drain from the main river. They drain essentially little catchment, which are farmed. And they don't receive so much flow since the farming. And the sandbars grow and grow. And they essentially become a lagoon, which, which the mouse is now being choked. So a very big change in uh, in the system, in the ecology. Now, so what's left of the sand moves along the coast with the wind and the wave, and that's what maintains the Cape Boning, um, uh, the, the, that's what maintains the Cape Boning and Green Peninsula. As the dam has decreased the supply of sand going to the coast, the coast of, of the peninsula is um, uh, eroding by very typically 100 meters since 1990. This is the plot here. Those small numbers in blue on the right are how much the coast has come back. And it's typically 100 meters. Uh, but at this point, where which is marked um, at the future bridge, it, the, the width of the width of the peninsula is becoming very thin. This is a view out of Lancet. In 2011, there's a scale on the, uh, on the picture. Uh, you can see there the 80 meter. In 2011, the bridge was over 110 meters. In 2018, it was only basically, basically 24 meters. So it's becoming, like, becoming very thin. I suspect it will breach. So if you look at the width of the bridge, we have data over time from the uh, 1970. The width seems to go um, uh, um, uh, up and down as a function of the main discharge in the river, the plot in the middle. It, not, it doesn't respond so much to the peak discharge of the river. But from the year 2000, it seems to be going down. And I suspect if you simply uh, uh, extrapolate that curve, it will bridge somewhere there. No, so if it breaches, what will happen? Well, we don't know, but uh, as a physicist, I, I guess that the tip of the peninsula, which is all this area in, in black there, uh, will, become, will, will become an island of sand, which is not supplied by sand, so it will basically wash away from the wave and the current. I do not know, we haven't done a study, how long that will take. What will happen to the bay, to the bay, it's a Bowling Green Bay, 
We do not know it. It hasn't been studied, but we can guess that. Uh, we can guess that the boundary between the uh, swift flushing um, of the clean water to the west and the uh, slow flushing turbid water to the east will shift toward the east. The tidal jet at the tip of Cape Boiling Green, if it switches from there to there, will, will become weaker. And that's what we believe also um, sustained billfish. What will happen then to the fish, we do not know. The bridge will expose the bay and the uh, small community, the Kangala, uh, more to wind from the east, uh, from the northeast, northeast, and thus to their waves, their wind driven wave. This, we believe, will change also will change also the course of erosion, but we do not know by how much. So what 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 can we do? The solution. Well, one we can basically we can um, uh, we can um, uh, um, uh, do nothing, monitor and see what happened. If a breach occurs, it will be a huge engineering effort to um, uh, stop it, you, because you are fighting the tidal current. And if that happens, if that is bad, you call it the, uh, you call it an act of God, so you're not being sued. Uh, you, there are no solution, you can dredge the sand from the, uh, from, from, from the lake behind the dam, the reservoir, you can put it in the river downstream. You can, uh, like, like at the Gold Coast, the sun nourishment, like on the strand, you can build uh, a various ground. You can plant some hardy trees. Uh, you can uh, maybe uh, also plant mangroves at the back. You can build gates at the dam. So you can actually um, uh, make some large flood to flush the sand from which is trapped in the river downstream near the mass. That's all. Thank you.